Okay then, ready to start? Yeah, I'm ready. Good, yeah. all right. Uh, so, last time, a couple weeks ago, um, we finished uh, destroying the teleport circle in Nasrallah and Zoromos' forward base, their fort. Um, at the base of the uh, eastern mountains, northeast of Orvis, uh, north of the uh, Great Bay. Um, so, uh, although there were a large number of uh, wards and um, magical traps uh, in the fort left behind, which was otherwise completely empty, um, there were also uh, some treasures, and uh, the team was able to uh, generally get around these obstacles and, and clear things, and then um, Naya essentially snapped her fingers and uh, removed coherency from the ground where the teleport circle used to be. Um, and then if I remember correctly, you all chucked it in the lava. So uh, it's it's super gone. Um, uh, so now nobody can uh, cast Teleport Circle and arrive at that location. Um, it's now invalid. Uh, so... Uh, Let's see. I think we're just going to bring you guys back home. I'm assuming we're all heading back to Aris's tower. That was the plan, yeah. Okay. Um so yeah. Uh let me let me get you guys all, all on your way back. Um So as usual, it's been uh a few days since you were here last. Um Today is currently uh, the 7th of uh, Ewis, which is uh, the 6th month of the year. Uh, so it's uh, just getting to be summertime. Um, pretty shortly, anyway. Um, I, think, I think somebody in the actual party had a, had a birthday. No, Mont Lauren's birthday is in a week. Excellent. Um, but, uh, I lost track a little bit. Um, <clears throat> you were telling us the date and what was going on in the world. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get back to like where my thought process was going right before that. I gotta get, I gotta get warmed up. Um, so, uh, everybody here at Aris's Tower has been uh, working hard on um, uh, fortifying the uh, moat that has been dug previously. Um, so, uh, at this point, it's mostly done. Um, the, uh, the, the wood uh, paneling on the moat uh, designed to keep it uh, watertight um, so that it can more easily be kept flooded. I thought we already filled it last time we were there. Uh, no. Um, last time you were here, there was still work to do on um, on getting the... Uh, yeah, getting we had decided we needed to line it. Uh, yes. Gotcha. The, uh, uh, we, did we put up a big wall of growth? Overgrowth. Yeah, uh, yeah, that is the fuzzy green bit outside the uh, outside the main wall there. Um, so uh, there have been a couple of supply de deliveries uh, in in the intervening um, wanings of the redshift, uh, but um, otherwise, it's still the usual crew out here. Um, uh, for the safety of everyone involved. Uh, so the people who made the delivery have already run back off to 
uh, the temple fort, um, and uh, we'll we'll switch out um, Alvis Taber uh, as the person who is currently hiding. Why is his speed set to one right now? One as opposed to for Elvis? Yeah, that's weird. I'll but ask him about it later. The wrong number in the wrong place, I guess. Um, <clears throat> so, first of all, um, you all get back. You have your uh, time to rest. Uh, we won't necessarily be doing this in temporal order. Uh, everybody can hit the long rest button one time. Um, I, I will tap it for Elvis Tavern. Gotcha. I was gonna say, was there any um, any sort of plant we found that could further help seal in the uh, the moat area, or are we pretty confident with what uh, how it's built now? Um, I think we're pretty confident in in how it's built now. Um, okay. Getting the um, yeah, get getting the 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 wood plank plus whatever like uh not not really cement but um what whatever like makeshift glue can be made out here um seems like it might be sturdy enough um <clears throat> so uh yeah um upon uh your return um the redshift has been ongoing for a couple days so it's still pretty far off um uh you arrive to find the team um hard at work on the on the last uh 25 percent of this moat um and uh you're back uh the brigadier is uh, ready to receive your report, um, and uh, first of all, uh, she I think would obviously be aware that you had uh, picked up the bug. Um, yeah, pick that up to bring it back. Correct. Probably said hello through it first before we uh, said Garfnage and pulled it. Yep. Check. Check. Hello. Sounds good. Yeah. So, um, so they were aware that you had you had been able to to grab it. Um, and I think was that before or after you uh, cleared the fort? I thought we went back for it afterward. Okay. Yeah. Um. So then, in that case, there was uh, um, <clears throat> there there was a short conversation. Uh, along the lines of, uh, wh well, we saw an explosion, but it seems like everybody's okay, so hurry back. Um, and uh, that is, that's exactly what happened. Um, so at the moment that you return, um the brigadier is actually in conversation with uh Vanthus XEF uh at uh his obelisk. Um and you overhear her talking about uh or you overhear them um talking about uh the remains of an auditorium they have discovered. Hmm, where are at? Hello? Hi. Hi, uh, you okay? Who are you asking? You, uh, you, yeah. Or was that in character? I'm confused. I asked if the auditorium was down below. Oh, oh, I didn't hear that at all. Yeah, that part didn't translate. We only heard the <laughs> hello part. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, sorry about that. Uh, so, um, 
Glad you asked. Uh, so yeah, when you um arrive and and interject on uh on this uh van will um his his great big eyeball will get a little bit closer to the to his side of the obelisk uh the the little window um that allows you to see uh his location and uh he says uh south of us uh north northwest ish of you all uh we think it's going to be a good spot to put an obelisk uh probably uh it was it was full of monsters but we handled it uh so should be all cleared out now i'm uh actually making the arrangements uh right after this conversation to uh get some of the materials for a new obelisk brought over Nice, congratulations, man. That's your first expansion, right? Yes, it is. Uh, unless you count the original one, in which case it makes two. Um, first one took a lot longer to set up uh, than uh, I was expecting. Um, now we just we can't we can't all be living uh, in uh, tents uh, with you know. 50 people or so up here. Uh, we have to have something a little bit more permanent. Um, oh, and uh, as as for that uh, city uh, that we found, uh, at least I was meaning to uh, get around to that. Um, I believe uh, this city uh, may line up uh, with the location of uh, Vragand that we have heard about. Um, however, it's pretty difficult to explore uh, for most people except for me, and I'm not just saying that so I can do it myself, uh, because uh, it is mostly upside down. Oh, joy. Oh, my. Uh, and uh, it, it sits in the mountains uh, above a uh, cavern of magma. So uh, we've been making some expeditions into there. But, uh, well, uh, well, so far... Um, Uh, no humanoid remains. Uh, little in the way of uh, meaningful information that uh, we've been able to discern so far. Uh, hard to tell uh, w with with everything in such disarray. Uh, what has been the effect of the redshift, and what has been the effect of something else? Uh, I am assuming that the city being upside down is an effect of the redshift. I admittedly don't know that for sure, but uh, I, it, it seems like most of these buildings were designed to be on the ground. Uh, <laughs> that sounds uh, exceedingly high stakes. That's pretty much how humanoids do things. Uh, yeah. Admittedly, humanoid architecture is not my forte and and never has been uh but uh i i believe you all prefer doors to be on on the floor uh instead of the ceiling not too uh, not too keen on falling in general that's that's fair things uh, very interesting As for Soriana, uh, flight is not something she's brewed just yet. I like just yet, though. That's optimistic. What level is Soriana? <laughs> uh, 
same as the rest of the forts, I think. So, um, well, you know the next question what level does she get flying? No, what level is the everybody else at the fort? <laughs> ah, uh, five. Okay, so we're actually uh, higher than everybody else at the fort. Oh, 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 uh, I mean the uh, the the fort level, uh, which is different from the the character levels. Um, right, okay. Soriana doesn't have uh, class levels. Most of the okay. So the NPCs just generally don't have class levels. Uh, it d depends. Uh, the okay. uh, B team is kind of on par with you guys. Um, uh, Lucent and Dex are quite a bit higher still. Uh, and uh, that's that's most of them. Okay. Um, Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, so uh, the the brigadier says, um, uh, well, uh, then, don't take too many risks, but keep exploring this city. If, uh, it's, if it's something only you can do, then fine. Um, uh, if you find anything interesting there, we can, uh, think about um, going a little bit deeper, uh, but uh, I want you to to keep your focus on uh, getting the obelisk network expanded, and we'll we'll have you meet up with us here. Uh, I think uh, our companions have just gotten back from uh, disrupting the movement of the dragons. Uh, is that? Am I correct? Yes, yes, we're here. Please continue. Don't let us interrupt. Oh, all right. Well, um, uh, so, uh, Van, if you uh, need my signature to get that obelisk uh, prepared, um, y you have it. Otherwise, uh, you know the you know the deal. Um, I think the location is fine, and um, I trust you to handle it. And uh, he says, uh, "Good, yep, yeah, that's uh, that's all right with me. Uh, I'll, well, maybe we'll see you in a couple weeks." Um, and then he. Uh, removes himself from the conversation. I wonder if they found any uh, useful items along the way. Well, we'll ask him about it in a couple of weeks. Uh, in the meaning, in the, in the meantime, uh, have there been any sightings of our uh, our dragonkin friends? Uh, she says, "Well, um, not here. Uh, so that that's that's the very very good news. Um, uh, and based on your earlier report, it sounds like we don't have to worry about them getting to that fort." Um anytime soon. Uh, and given what we were able to scout out when we were in the, the ridge above that fort, I'm pretty sure that uh, basically south and east down to the shore here is relatively, you know, as safe as this area ever gets for us now. Yeah, there's no one there and they can't teleport in anymore. Okay. Um, I have no idea how long it would take them to build a replacement or where they would build it, but between now and then, 
it I, seems I, like we would have time. I understand that it uh, takes uh, wizardly types upwards of a year to get these things up and running properly. From the scale that we found on the uh, large stone throne, it seems like uh, Dragon Daddy did just that some year, <laughs> some point before we arrived. Oh, you didn't mention the scale. What what have you found? On a um on the large throne, uh we found through the main doors where um Alvis found that uh rather dangerous uh onyx cone. Or charcoal or whatever material it is. There um there was a scale that we located which indicates dragon butt. Um, that's not the sort of thing that we would have seen from Doramos or Nasharala, and the seat was way too big for either of them. Do you have, um, do you, do you have the scale? We I could... think Aranaeus, don't you have it? Uh, let me check my I'd imagine that, uh... Oh, I do, actually, I have it. Okay, go. I was gonna say, I'd imagine that, uh, I'm sorry, fair day. That seat alone was almost... Would have written wide. down um, just because of the mapping. Uh, yeah, I'll hand the the scale that I have over though. Okay. Large, um, large throne. Yeah. Um, uh, she takes it in her uh, left hand, and she she turns it over and she says, uh, well, um, not, not salamander, uh, that, that for certain, um, I suppose I didn't get a good look at these, uh, dragons myself, uh, did they have the same scale color as as this uh i mean it's pretty similar yeah um but they're the brother and sister are more humanoid but i mean their scales are that that red uh, you know, yes. like some, some orange Mo Morio too, for that matter. Yeah, Morio, you recall, was almost um, he he was uh, like full full lizard. Uh, he he barely had uh, any like human skin that you could see. Totally, right. I seem to remember him just being ruby scaled. Um, she, she says, uh, although, um, the, the scale, which is, uh, about, um, two inches in, in length at its, uh, widest point, um, she says it, it is perhaps a little small for a, uh, fully grown dragon. Uh, which I assume this king must be. But, uh, uh... We'll hold on to it, if you don't mind. Having having a scale, I think... Well, uh, there, there's always use for... Um, yeah, absolutely. I, I'm sure Dex can do something with the hair or nails or skin scales of an enemy or uh what, what. yeah well, maybe we can scry with it or something i, I understand i uh, i would suggest it's possible that it was done at a younger point in uh life i suppose thinking about what we would expect from the size of that throne and the size of a dragon um ignis uh was probably starting off with the, uh, the teleport circle and then the rest was built around it because I don't think the uh, big daddy dragon there would have a very fun time 
sit in that narrow room for a year trying to get that spell going. Yes, that was a fairly small chamber. So I I wonder if putting down the teleportation circles was something he, uh, he might have done earlier in his uh, dominion over the area. And so he right, first been, step of controlling the territory. Yep. Yeah, so he might have been a bit younger. That makes sense, time. actually. It's the kind yeah. of thing that I might have done first. The other consideration is that it could be from an area with finer scales, perhaps towards the uh, the end of the tail or a fingertip or some other articulated point. Yeah, also, also a possibility. Um, well, uh, I admit when I saw it, though, I, I thought that perhaps it belonged to the giant we had seen before. Too big to belong to the sister, at the very least. We can rule her out, I suppose. Yeah, definitely. Indeed. Um, either way, this this could be useful. Uh, so, um, good work on that front. Now, uh, what, what, what was this uh, charcoal? Stra- dangerous charcoal you mentioned? Uh, yes, um... Wherever Alva Staver is, he's probably trying to learn more about it right now, but it uh, is an interesting sort of implement, and when he touched it, he seemed to get really sickly really fast. Not ill, just like the life was drained out of him just for touching it. So we're considering what sort of uh, combat use it may have. I believe right now he's considering how he can put it at the end of the whip. All right. Um, He's probably with Dex right now. I well, uh, I hope not because Dex is in Orbis. Uh, but oh, I believe well, they, <laughs> I guess that uh, would mean yeah. Conversation might be in order. Um, I uh, was planning to. Uh, she looks at the sun. Uh, have a conversation with Dex in about an hour. Um, so. Uh, take some time to to rest and uh well you can give me whatever other information you have um and then we will um yes there were a couple more bits that i wanted to explain uh first of all the um lava flow is controlled by a mechanism where there's a certain stone that seems to flow with the molten lava with um the eyeballs still left in the sculpture but Take the eyeballs out and it shuts off. Uh, Alvis has those as well. We left one of them intact in case there is something we wanted to attempt to learn from uh, this magic that they have and how they've implemented it. Once the stones were removed, it seemed to lose its magical properties. We didn't try putting them back in to see if it reactivated it, but uh, there was also hot lava below and we didn't really want to drop them. So, uh, well, yeah, uh, yes, um, leaving it intact, I think, was a good plan either way. Um, I would imagine it's shallower than when we were there last, maybe a little cooler, but nonetheless. We can save the environment while we're at it. Um, and then the other is that we found uh, Nasharala's. Uh, domain underground in a place that I really don't think a giant or a big dragon would be able to get to. And in what appeared to be a a rebellious sort of act, she seemed to melt piles of gold to the floor of her domain. Uh, Mount Laren, in fact, I believe you pried up one of them. Uh, yeah. I... <laughs> I am, in fact, carrying a small slag pile of solid gold. So we we found that there are some remnants of coins and candelabras and things like that in it, but it all appears to be pretty much gold. Um, The other chunks were a little bit larger than we were comfortable with trying to pry up and take out of there. But I'm sure if we send a crew that's got the right tools, they can extract the rest of it and safely transport it back. There's nothing magical about them. 
<clears throat> my well, yes, um, that's an enticing reason to head back there. Um, uh, we, of course, believe the location is uh, fully safe to explore now. I, unless they're immediately planning some sort of return trip, which would be for naught because their teleporters broke it and they would need to find some way to fly out as the redshift occurs and get back home somehow through it, which I don't really think is a very safe plan for them, so they probably won't be any time soon. Maybe some scouts might go over there, but I, uh, unless the Dragon King himself decides to pay the place a visit, I don't think we're going to have any trouble over there. And the odds of that happening are pretty low, as I'm pretty sure the Dragon King likes to be at the tower. Right. Then, uh, then yes, uh, we'll, we'll send a team over there. Um, and, uh, additionally, um, I think it's about time we gave our scouts the okay to uh, finally step foot out of Orvis a little bit and start heading back up north and east. Um, Did we leave the drawbridge down and no, the door open? We we pulled all that up. Uh, we left the uh, rope right. and um, a ladder that we attached, so... Whoever returns, right. unless it gets hit by the red shift or a decent storm, it should just be intact and in place and waiting for people to climb right back yeah. down. Yeah, so go in from above in the back. Yeah, it, if you're going to bring a cart, it would be bringing a cart to the front, but having uh, one or two people come up from the back. There were no sentries in there, and that was nice. No flame skulls waiting for us, nothing. No, but they had a ward there. They did have some wards, and in fact, there's a, a room with some uh, obsidian bowls at the ground. We weren't sure if it was an eating area or a bathroom or some sort of um, magical chamber, but it was also sealed with what appeared to be something that would cause a similar explosion to the one that we saw uh, when we first arrived. Be on the lookout for it. Uh, I don't know if there's a really safe way to deactivate it short of dispelling the magic. Yeah, we didn't really have that option at that point. It, well, I mean, we tried a couple of times, but uh, they're a little tough to crack. Maybe, um, maybe send Sharp with whoever you send out there so that way he can uh, try to give it a shot. Pretty sure he in his good magic. idea. If not sharp, then um, uh, Morty should be able to, I believe. That sounds like a um, yeah. That sounds like a good idea. Um, I'm I'm a half of mine to uh, see if uh, Dex wants to take a trip uh, next week, um, especially if we're considering. Um, taking that layer for ourselves as well. Um, he may want That's to see the area. Right. Um, we'll need an obelisk if we want to take it for sure. Oh, that that should not be a problem. Uh, too much of one anyway. Um, the Empire has been uh, a little more generous in the past year uh, than they were at the start of our campaign. Um, I think uh, if, if they catch word that you all have found a ton or two of gold, I think they'll be even a little more generous. Uh, of course, you all will be compensated for like ninety percent of that, so uh, don't don't worry. Um, Much appreciated. Uh, So seems... And uh, oh, speaking ahead. of which, um, payment for the the quest at hand, the immediate quest at hand, uh, would be um, uh, quick math fifty marks a piece. 
Fantastic. Yeah, sweet. I, uh... Any XP? I think you guys got XP last time, or did I not give you XP last time? Uh, yeah, I don't think we XP'd last I don't time. think so. My number hasn't changed for oh, a couple I of sessions. Oh, I I completely forgot in that case. Um... Uh, then I would like you all to take, um, let's see, uh, that would divide out to, uh, about 1,500 each. We Again, I'll update That's our, uh, Very nice. I'll update our gnome. Getting there. So our kind of general minimum right now should be 2,600, 26,000 rather. That's where I'm at, yeah. Yeah, I'm at 26,000. I'm at 26 as well. Okay, that's where we're at. Um, I'm at 24,500. Um, should that be adjusted at all, or is that... Um, goes? Let's see. Uh, I think we were doing it on um, everybody catches up on every odd level. Uh, so... Um, so I'm caught up. All right. As best I can be. There we go. Just one more. Yeah, I yeah. think that might have uh, been the effect of missing, like, one or two sessions. I think so. It was the, um, the show they won, maybe? Probably, yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, I think so. Um, anyway, um, so that... You have all been uh, looted uh, now. Um, uh, ba -ba -ba. Was there anything else um, important? Oh, uh, uh, there was a interesting fairy we came across along the way. Um, unlike how we saw uh, Ruby fly in with a uh, busted wing, and we've seen a lot of birds and other creatures with uh, parts that have been damaged by the redshift, this, this fairy in particular seemed to have gotten an upgrade from it. Um, they had additional eyes, they had a cluster of wings when they normally wouldn't. And um, seem to be really enjoying the uh, powerful symmetrical upgrades that it received from being in the redshift. So it just naturally dwells in the redshift. It might come oh, by wow. and visit us. It seems pretty friendly. We got it drunk, so, you know, there's already that camaraderie. I... But safely, I hope. Um... No, one acorn at a time. It was wine, it was in spirit. Sure. Uh, well, yeah, I, I suppose the... Uh, it is unpredictable and all that. Um, and uh, we do know that... Um, I suppose pixies do not count as uh, your traditional humanoid... Um, so, less affected in general than people like us are. It makes me wonder if creatures of the uh, Feywild specifically, with no, um, no normal origin on this plane, happen to be enhanced by it instead of uh, destroyed or damaged by it. Well, uh, I'm not sure about that. Ruby and Grandmother were, um, certainly not. Well, and the brig How? is the brigadier? Who's who's got the arm? Uh, yeah, it's her. He's a human. She's yeah. Human. Oh, I th okay. I forgot. I forgot that she was human. Um, Aranis, by the way, I think you have like a fan blowing or something. Ah, uh, thank you. I'm trying to adjust my um my sound levels because the fan is kind of cutting into the noise suppression. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Thanks for the, um, are, are you using the, um, yeah. Or do you have the noise suppression turned on? 
I did for a little while, but it was making it really hard to uh, to just speak and without shouting. Okay, um, got it. Hopefully, my my automatic or not automatic setting, my my input sensitivities can be adjusted to leave the fan noise out. But yeah, do what you gotta do. Um... Uh, anyway, she says, um, well, I mean, the, um, grandmother had been, uh, for, uh, years, as I understand it, um, uh, protecting her, um, flock of, of creatures, uh, of course, the, the pixies who live with her, uh, would as she tells it, be afflicted by the redshift and she would she would heal them. Um, that's true. And that's how she got into the state she's in. Um, well, this so, pixie's different, I guess. Uh, or lucky. Uh, did you tell her uh, uh, about us, the commission? Well, she seemed pretty friendly and was certainly no friend of the um, the dragon kid. So, yeah, we we explained oh, approximately great. where to find our camp and to come by and visit. There's probably a lot we can learn from her. Well, I'll, I'll offer her a welcome party if she does decide to visit. Um, as long as she doesn't try to unplug our obelisk or anything like that. Um, but uh, I'm not super worried about that. Um, all right, was that everything? Complete report? That is the complete report. Unless there's anything else anybody wants to mention, but I'm pretty sure we got everything there. Uh, I think we've covered everything. Yeah, I mean, that that's definitely the full report. Uh, I I've been looking at this old map we have of, uh, you know, Vesoff from before. Yes. Uh, and I've been thinking about, you know, the size of the bay. Did we, uh, did we ever get a chance to, to learn more about the shape of the coastline to the south? I, I look on the map and there's this town uh, uh, off uh, Ulfwell, maybe, I think it's called. Um, and I wonder if the bay is flooded enough if there isn't some sort of path through the mountains there uh, that may be an easy access for our friends if they're on the other side of that mountain. Uh, and I'm wondering if we shouldn't uh, send an expedition to figure that out. That is a um, astute concern. Um, I think uh, I'll make a point of contacting Nami at Harpum um uh today and uh we'll we'll make preparations now that the now that the dragons are um no longer in the general vicinity um it should be much safer to sail up and around that coastline um we'll see if we can send a ship out that way um in the next waning uh hope Hopefully we get a long one uh, soon, and they can make it the full distance. Um, there, uh, one thing that we do have confirmed is that there seems to be a uh, another landmass um, off the southern tip of the swamp. Um, some uh some mountains um in that area uh so uh we we know at least that uh there there is still land of some sort in southeast Vesoff um but that's all we have so far um yes i i think we'll make a point of seeing if we can uh circumnavigate this bay first of all um just been thinking of the uh 
I feel like our our role shifts now. I mean, as much as that wall at Shose is a problem for us, if uh, if most of our dragon related friends are on the other side of that wall, uh, it certainly makes defending our positions a lot easier. And so I've been trying to figure out where the holes in our defenses might be. That is true. Um, fortunately, uh, as uh, you heard a few minutes ago. Um, Phantas Exiath has not found any sign of uh, much of anything, to be honest. Um, uh, no, no dragon princes in that area, at least none that have been encountered yet. Um, and they've been there for a fair few months, so uh, one would expect um, something like that sooner or later. Um, right. Now, uh, I do know that um, Magnius told us uh, about, uh, I believe it was four additional uh, siblings. Um, but was not able to tell us where they layer. Uh, so we could be looking at as many as four additional uh, layers similar to the one that we have just dealt with. And, uh, well, if I'm, if I'm doing my math right and looking at my maps correctly, I would go as far as to say that it seems like Morio held sway over the area west of Orvis. Um, perhaps from the edge of the redshift to the river. Um, yeah, that was mentioned as well. Uh, now, the uh, the two siblings from what we've heard, it seems like they have, uh, and and from the evidence we've gathered of of their knowledge of the area. Um, didn't they mention Orvis by name once? I believe they refer to it as um, our fort or the, the place that we've been using. I don't remember if they actually knew it by name. I may have misremembered. Um, either way, uh, they have a range from the mountains uh, to the northern arena, uh, and uh, if not to Orvis, then nearly, um, because I believe we first encountered them on the edge of the swamp. That's correct. So... I've been outlining these uh, these points with the information that we have about the redshift zone, and, and uh, to my eye, it seems like these two uh, independent groups have about the same area of control, the same territory. Um, So if that's the case, we could we could be looking at as many as four uh, additional groups with the same amount of territory. Right. Um, but where would they be is my question. I don't know that there's anything between the Vragand and Orvis, or we probably would have seen their um, troops by now. If they could be far north of us. They could be behind the wall at Chose. That's what I'm thinking, is that um, it could be Vraybast, Alsanes, and Alphawell that all kind of represent the areas where they, they dwell from, where Vraybast might be 
uh, further north from where uh, Benthorexiac's uh, group has been. Whereas Elsane's might be more in the uh, kind of general central area. And Alphawell, of course, would be more in the south. That also, um, it could be that one of them specifically stationed out of Vest. So that would mean the one in Vrabast or Alsanes would probably be the one in the north. And then Alphawell would be um, in the south. Um, yes, I've, I've, had, I've had very similar thoughts um, on this matter. Uh, so, mm-hmm. I suppose we're fortunate in the fact that they have, um, decided to remain split in this way so far. Uh, we can't assume that will stay the same forever, um, but we can at least take advantage of it for the time being. Um, what I worry about is how exactly did Morio get to, um, uh, the the fort that we kind of defeated him in his final stand at, it doesn't seem like they would have taken the teleport circle that we just destroyed to get there after we destroyed his. So it makes me worry if there is something further north between Orvis and Vragan that maybe they're more secretive, maybe they're better about keeping hidden, maybe they... Already, Maybe they don't range as far afield. It could right. also they're, be they're that just... they're underground. We did find that right. uh, channel under the manor that leads to what appears to be somewhat of the Underdark. And uh, that, you know, the implication could be that there's actually something in the Underdark or one that mostly dwells down there. Hmm. Well, and it does make you wonder, like, why did the two... Why right. did the the princess and her brother hang together? Were they? Was it ever said that they were twins? It could be that the other family members are just otherwise occupied and they like, don't give a shit. Like it could be that this is not their project. Um, I mean, this wasn't so, uh, their problem until we came into their did, area. They didn't even seem to know Morio was slain until, of course, we um, revealed did, it. Did we not um, claim? Uh, keep Ignis after killing Moria? We claimed it after, but yeah. we defiled his bed and destroyed the teleportation circle before, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, I seem to remember it. We did that there. pretty early on. Well, we uh, we broke into his bedroom and, and um, uh, Alvis uh, well, you know, he defiled did. his clothing. I believe, he did what though, he does. we had found the teleportation circle then and I destroyed it with acid. Uh, dragon's breath yeah i can't remember if that was the first or second time but i know that that's how it was destroyed you're right no i remember now it was um you had brought it back uh for a um investigation first uh it was copied down onto paper right before you destroyed it it wasn't until you revisited the location that it was uh okay that said, it doesn't disclude the possibility that somewhere no, south of Ragan is where one of them reigns and rules. And uh, again, if they're a burrowing sort, perhaps they wouldn't be seen on the surface. So, can we get south of Dragon? Cannot get. Well, uh, Dex, uh, sorry, not Dex, uh, Van and his team uh, should have a, a smaller obelisk set up around that area pretty soon. So uh, I expect we'll hear some updates from them in the next month or so. Um, frankly, I hope they find nothing. Uh, at this point, that is peace of mind. Um, but we'll see what happens. Uh, we'll be prepared. Um, as always, orders to the uh, scouting half of our organization is um, self-preservation first. Um, 
anyone who sees anything dangerous obviously has orders to get to safety as soon as possible and uh, report it in before it can harm anyone else. Um, so, uh, if we encounter more of these princes and princesses, uh, we should hear about it before anything um, begins. I think my concern, which I've not heard mentioned yet, so I'll go ahead and mention it, is that when, when the brother and sister pair try to get back to their stronghold and cannot, this might anger daddy a lot. And if daddy takes off from the tower, which is where we're kind of guessing that he's stationed, um, what, <laughs> what do we have for defenses against a big grown-up dragon? Yes, that is uh, ever... Ever the question asked by kings and presidents the world over. Um, uh, I admit it's uh, not been something I've wanted to uh, spend a lot of time thinking about, um, but uh, obviously I have. Um, I have Smithy working on a uh, project um, uh, I prefer not to um, give the impression to the rest of the commission that we are preparing to fight a dragon. Um, if that can be avoided at all, then obviously we want to avoid it. Um, but uh, for the purposes of defense um, and uh, under the assumption that uh, there is indeed a dragon out here who may take interest in our bases at some point, um, Ground to air weapons seem like a optimal choice. Okay. Um, well, I I figured I would just mention it because there's there's no point as you know like stewing on this, but it is quite possible that the absence of two teleportation circles will finally get his attention. Yes, I it's mean, not, it maybe it, not. It just I depends. Don't the boat will help us at that point. Um, well, I mean, <laughs> you know, we already took out Morio. We've prevented the brother and sister from returning. So it's kind of like, well, um, we're we're starting to make inroads on decimating his numbers. Yes. Uh, and since they're his children, I, th I think he might reasonably be angry. I think we do still have Vesoth on our side um, for a little while longer. Uh, by which I mean, it's still, we still have a fair ways to go until we reach that tower. Um, if that is indeed where this dragon layers, um, then even flying it would take him some time to reach us and it may be too far for him to turn around and make it back to his lair especially if 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 he is at the tower um he has the the smallest amount of time possible 
between redshifts to return. There, there is, we have the advantage on being able to retreat. As we we move toward the tower, we retreat back away from the tower after the redshift begins. We have ample time to do that. Outrun the thing. Um, this dragon, if he if he retreated from us back to the tower in that direction uh, after the redshift started, he would be going back toward the tower uh, the redshift. Um, which I, I would not want to do, personally. Um, He's the source of their protection there, from what Magnius told us, so the other risk he runs is that we manage to uh, pin him down in such a way that he can't escape for a couple of days, and at that point, or just have him chasing us. And if the redshift begins before he gets there, everybody who's there is going to get blasted by it. Which sounds like yes. it's all well, of his entire forces and family there. Uh, there was indeed mention of a device uh, by Magnus. Um, uh, but if it's anything like uh, Dex's inventions, um, it probably needs some kind of power source. So, who, who knows who who in this dragon's army provides that, if not the king himself. Uh, so yes, that is an option, although I I don't much like the idea of a trapped dragon in my backyard. Um, the other although worry if, is if he's actually the one who generates the red shift and in doing so also protects his local kin. Um, trying to fight him and have him generate the red shift in the middle of the field would be most disastrous. I I don't believe that's the case. The redshift has been going on for far longer than that's true. We've been told that uh, these dragons have been taking advantage of it. Don't dragons live a very long time, though? They do. It, it's certainly possible this yeah, king ages. is upwards of a thousand years old. I, we, we can't rule out that he right. is so, I mean, it, it could be that he was around. He just wasn't interested in taking over Vesoth. Yes. You know, I, I until... Think, I think merely we can rule out the idea that he is the source of it himself. Uh, right? for, right. hmm, for him to have actually been able to set up the teleportation circles, that would mean being away from the Tower of Ves for a year apiece. Um, that would mean that he does, does need to bring whatever form of protection with him or is the one who generates it. Right, at a bare minimum means he has a way to protect himself. Right. Then must have something similar then to um, to our obelisks. Um, even if they're... Uh, I suppose if it's on the span of a year you could set one of these up temporarily. Uh, she says, uh, this one here has been here for less than a year. I suppose if we rooted it up and left somewhere, we count that as temporary. Um, maybe they only have one. Hmm. Interesting. That implies that they lack the capability to make more. That would mean just destroying the one they have would pretty much defeat them. Well, it also means we're a hella juicy target once they figure out what we're doing. Yes. Very good, Montmarin. But they would have to make sure that they keep us alive in order for us to be able to do that for them or to teach them how to do it. Oh, I don't they may just Yeah, them. they may just want to steal the ones we made. Right, like they, they may be happy with what we've already put in place for them. Indeed. Right. We have quite the little frontier out here already. Supply lines, forts, self-sustaining for the most part. Okay. Um, well, I didn't necessarily mean to bring up a tough topic, but oh, no, I, no, I did kind of presume that you were already on it because that's like your job. <laughs> uh, yes. 
hunting dragons. Uh, well, <laughs> our our main job is still to get to the tower. Um, again, if we can avoid these dragons at all on the way to the tower, then good. Um, but if we if we have to fight them, then then we'll we'll fight them. Um, I think having defenses ready against a dragon attack is uh, going to be an optimal choice for us. Uh, at the very least, we should make sure that our most forward locations um, keep this in mind. Um, protection from uh, fire breath and flying things. We should probably talk to Smitty about flying ice projectiles. Hmm. Or something like that. I I wonder if something else would be more effective than I don't know how easy it would be to infuse a uh, radiant or psychic energy into such a weapon. But I don't know that those would be resisted the same because if uh, it is a being of and in control of a lot of fire, sometimes it occurs that they're completely immune to ice as well, such as the flame skulls appear to be. Right. We'll start with steel. That's a good start. Um. I suppose mounts that fly are not the sort of thing that's just you know readily available even throughout the uh, the, the wealthier and more royally backed side of the Cradian Empire. Uh, I knew a woman who rode a griffin once, but she never worked for anybody but herself, so you're right on that one. Griffin riding mercenary, huh? Could probably yeah, use not the most common here. thing in the world. Um, hard to keep fed, though. That's understandable. I certainly wouldn't expect it's uh, healthy to feed a griffin on all the tainted and twisted creatures it might be able to hunt out here. Hmm, well, yeah, that would be... Um... Crunch right into a big old piece of glass thinking it's a creature's wing. On that note, uh, I believe I am uh, due with Dex uh, any minute now. Um, if you all want to uh, take part in the conversation, uh, I think your input will be valuable regarding this uh, fort you've cleaned out. Of okay. course. So, uh, d did you say something, Naya? I just said, you know, of course. Okay. Um, so she, uh, she she puts her hand back on the obelisk again, and after a moment, um, a, uh, a a portal uh, with Dex's face in it appears. Um, and uh, he greets you all, and uh, he says, uh, my... My little device, I haven't been able to um, look through it for a couple of days. So uh, I'm assuming all went well. Indeed uh, it did. Yeah, you could say that. Good. Uh, so uh, the Brigadier conveys the uh, report and the information that you gave uh, to him. And... Um, Uh, nodding along with that information. Um, she eventually uh, tells him about the suggestion to uh, send a team over there, uh, possibly with uh, additional 
wizard support um, in case of any more uh, magic in the area. Um, and uh, he says, uh, well, collecting, um, collecting the materials and, and whatnot, uh, sure, we can do that. Um, although I, I have been thinking. Uh, now, I know we have been using uh, Keep Ignis for some time. Um, and perhaps I'm overthinking this. But Magnius seems to believe, while we have him, that he was being scried upon. And I'm of the opinion that if a uh, low-ranked, uh, for lack of a better term, thug in a dragon's army knows that or believes that he can be scried upon, well, that tells me that somebody in that army has that ability. Um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with scrying. Um, the short of it is that if you know a person or you know a place, you can see them from afar through a mirror, through a... a, a, a bowl of water, uh, wh whatever, reflective, crystal ball. Um, uh, crystal balls are overrated. Um, they refract weird. Um, in any case, um, generally uh, invisible, undetectable. Um, not the most uh, reliable in terms of... Um, spell cost versus time spent but if you could put an invisible copy of yourself inside a war room or, or whatever whatever kind of conversation you wanted for 10 minutes a lot of the time that's enough um Point being, uh, Brigadier, I'm not sure we should return to this um, location at all. Um, or at least not not more than once or or, or twice more to to clear it out. Um, it's possible you were being scribed upon while you were all there. It, interesting. It's uh, an interesting thought, but that would make me wonder uh, who was able to continually cast scrying like that and who would actually know the survivors of that battle. It's assumed by the siblings that either everyone died or... Some of them retreated and faced punishment of the one who we found shattered outside. Well, like I said, um, a few minutes is a few minutes, right? The the cost of scrying is is high compared to the amount of um, time you can spend doing it. But if you can do it, if you know how to do it and you're lucky or you have some additional knowledge of when and where your potential target is going to be. If you, uh... Okay, well, um... Say I, I know you're going to come to my castle uh, today. Sometime today. Uh... I could cast the spell once, maybe twice. Um, 
that day. And all I have to do is pick a good time, an optimal time, uh, when you might be there. And that that is just the thing, because here's the tricky thing about scrying. You have to know the location you're looking at. If you don't have a location, you have to know the person you want to look at. Now, normally, getting something like a uh, lock of hair or, or what have you from, from a person is ideal. Um, but if you simply know who they are, uh, it is also possible to scry them directly. Um, if whoever did this scry if if you scry a location and then if you scry and then if you you happen to see people in that location you've gained knowledge that they exist you know who they are now you can then scry them directly follow them wherever they go you can do it whenever you want um uh, to again to the point I think perhaps we should not spend too much time at this at this uh, fort of these siblings. And in fact, Brigadier, I think perhaps we should uh, stop using uh, the Ignis key. I, I think it, it may be far too late, um, but I, I, I think I have been thinking about this for for a little while now. After after spending some time talking to our salamander friend, and um, I can I can do what I can to protect our most uh, sensitive information um, and conversations uh, from this ability. But I can't be everywhere at once, and I can't do it twenty four seven, not twenty four ten. Is there any chance someone has found a way to watch these communications between the crystals, between the, the, the gems? Um, the monoliths, the whatever I call them. Uh, that would be a problem. Um, but I think unless they have some way to interface with it directly, uh, actually, uh, I think I think Arisa would probably notice if anything like that happened. She seems to be in tune with things pretty well, um, better better than I ever have been, anyway. Right. Is she around? You can ask her that question, maybe. She's. You haven't seen her. Just occurred to me. Yeah, if I haven't seen her, i will be like, I haven't seen her. Uh, Lucent says, I, th I think she went, um, has traveled, uh, to, to another one of the obelisks. Uh, we, we can, we'll find her. Um, Dex. Yes. Dex, w would it make sense to reinstall the spying device at the lair? Hmm. Um, It's small enough and unobtrusive enough that if, let's say, there was an attempt and it failed and they sent scouts over to figure out, like, what's going on and why, the, the spying device might be able to see that there's some kind of activity. Yes, um, that's true. It would. Um, I think... Uh... I mean, I know you don't think that it's a good idea to... And I, I get why. Well, um, I, 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 but I maybe don't... remotely we could be monitoring that. Yes. Uh, let me let, let me just clarify. I, I don't think it's a bad idea to to return there and make sure we've found all there is to find and that sort of thing. I just... Um, the idea of having our people living there... Um, makes it incredibly more likely 
that somebody who chooses to scry on that location would find something important. Yeah, I agree. It, it might not be me. It might not be Lucent, but it could be a conversation between whoever is uh, uh, in charge of that place. It could be the location of our obelisk. It could be that they may not even be aware of how these obelisks function or what they are yet. Uh, like, like you said, if if they know about them, it, I mean, I could never rule out the possibility that somebody creative and enterprising could hijack my system as much as I hate to say it. Um, giving them a potential access to that information is uh, not good. Right. So if we can, ha you know, we've already been there. We see what there is. Um, we've blown several of their wards. So if they're if they were tracking us, then they know that some of the wards are blown, and they have some idea of who was there. They don't know us particularly, so they'd have to describe us. But maybe that spying device would be useful. Um, how long did you say the battery lasts? A couple weeks? A few weeks, yes. Uh, I, I think when um, if we send our uh, secondary team over there, uh, I, I, I wouldn't hate the idea of getting out of Orvis for a little bit and poking around. Um, if you all think there's still magic in the area, it might be safest for me to have a look at it. Uh, well, it might make sense to just see if there's any reaction to the fact that we invaded the lair. Yes, that too. Um, Brigadier says, uh, well, D Dex, if you uh, want to lead a party over there, um, it's all yours. Uh We'll have somebody from here. Um, I'll send. Perhaps I will send Angela's group um, or Mortier's group uh, to um, to bring over the the device for you. Um, can meet in the area and then and then do what you need to do there. Um, Uh, yeah, so, um, Kelsey says, right, um, and, uh, by the way, there was one other thing, um, uh, I've been thinking about this Keep Ignis problem for a little while. Um, so uh, I didn't want to worry you, Lucent, while you were uh, out on the front lines. Uh, so I went ahead and uh, did a little something. And um, I sent a letter off to grandmother. Uh, or, well, one of the uh, expeditionists living in the grove at the moment and um, she has consented to uh, allow a few more people to live over there as well as um, get her obelisk connected to the rest of them so uh, we'll be able to uh, talk with everybody there soon. Cool. And that should be a little bit safer than uh, living in Morio's house. So we're just going to pull the obelisks from there? Uh, 
Well, uh... We could use them as shelters of last resort if we didn't want to move the obelisk, I suppose. Yes. Uh, Lucent, I suppose that's up to you. Uh, I'd... I'd hate to abandon a location and, um... As, as long as we don't allow too much sensitive information or people to pass through there, it's lower risk, but it's a risk all the same. Well, if they decide they actually want to go back and investigate, I wouldn't want them to come across a fully intact obelisk that they could potentially learn from, take, and set up somewhere else. Right. right. I mean, wherever we have an obelisk, it needs to be defended. Yes. Um... I should, um, he kind of, he kind of goes to a, to a lower whisper. Um, I should note, uh, my, my greatest fear on this is that, well, we, we've been, we've been living at that Ignis base for uh, two years almost. Um, there has been ample opportunity for them to do this and follow some person, any one of us from there to Fort Americus, to Orbis. Um, once they once they know those locations, they could watch them whenever they wanted. They could they could find out whatever information they wanted about us potentially. Um, I'm not saying it's happened, but uh, we just can't rule that out at this point, can we? Right. What would that look like if it was happening? Nothing. You won't see it. Um, unless unless you use some kind of magic that lets you see things that are invisible. Um, and e even then, it has to be uh, uh, kind of a um, higher level <laughs> invisibility seeing. Um, that, that's, that's just the thing. You don't know when you're being scried upon. Uh, if, if you did, it wouldn't be nearly as much of a problem. Is there a way to set up a trap, a magical trap for that? Uh, we need that something someone that with wizards sight, can work on. It's the sort of thing where if somebody right. is able to see invisibility, they should be able to see when a scrying is in effect. Hmm. A thought occurs. How much does the Cradian Empire really want to take this place? Vesoth? Yes. I, Lucent says, I, 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 well, I mean, this is a scholastic slash military endeavor, uh, but um, my knowledge of the situation back home is that there, there are uh, plenty of interests who would love to have access to Vesoth uh, once we're done here. Um, the, those who are optimistic enough to believe that we're going to succeed anyway. The reason I ask is because I wonder if we could get a, um, a full garrison of uh, fighters capable of you know, taking on a dragon or the lieutenant's dragon. Speaking of scrying, I know a bit about it. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I was, I was like, I was like, wait a minute. Do I know anything that would help me know if somebody were, was scrying on me? I, I am that kind of uh, magic user. Yep. That. So yeah, that that is basically scrying within a mile. But then the uh, the proper scrying spell has no, no no distance limit. Right, and the only other thing I could do is divination. That's something yeah. like that. Um, but I thought maybe there would be something that I could use that would like tell me if I was being watched. But it doesn't look like it. There is. Yeah, but a creature that can see the sensor then uh, 
yeah, then you, you'd see this little light orb following you around, and you'd be like, hey, wait. Right. Um, so what, what were we saying? Sorry about the um, military garrison. The, uh, the idea that we could potentially get uh, a military garrison that's capable of actually fighting a full-size dragon or their lieutenant, in opinion, that if, if safety and progress is something that's really of concern, it might take more manpower than we have out here. It might take more people than, you know, we have to muster for anything, especially if multiple of their, um, the, the, quote, children uh, come at us all at once with all of their forces combined. Well, that's true. Uh, and uh, we are, uh, as I understand it from... Uh, what I've been told of goings on in the Empire and nearby, uh, always recruiting. Um, uh, no offense, but the type of people who make it out here um, aren't always your usual folk. Um, Reinforcements is a tricky thing. It's a balancing act of keeping everybody fed and sheltered, having the space for them under the obelisks. Uh, the, the level of trust as well to spend years under these things. I know we have not had an accident, but... Well, you had the happened, the rain of blades, but that's well, very, what very I mean, infrequent. What I mean is, if something happens to one of these obelisks during a redshift, we would all instantly be dead. Um, and <laughs> uh, I suppose I am insane enough to make that risk, and I suppose so is everybody else here. Uh, but um, the more centuries of people you invite the the bigger and bigger that um the cost of that risk becomes uh, yeah even so uh can we can we afford a fighting force whose job it is to uh sit in each of our forts and defend it constantly um would it be a better use of our resources to have uh, people who can go out into the field? Uh, these things are unclear. There's a lot of downtime in this place and um, a lot of things to balance. Um, hmm. Having uh, clerics available and their ability to um, rapidly multiply a small source of food into a large uh, pile of food may be all we need to help with the, uh, the feeding issue where just a few rations is able to feed for days and days. That's true. And um, Mortier, Lodevane have been exceptionally helpful on that front um people with this level of ability are pretty rare um even among the high clergy so um i suppose the answer to your question is really yes i am looking for uh always looking for people who can help us out out here uh this is obviously something I want to get done. Um, but uh, it's worth being aware that uh, in a lot of ways, everybody already out here is the best we've got. Uh, people who are better at what you do than you are are not all that common. Oh shucks! Yeah, yep, yep. Oh yeah. 
Here, I thought the Kradian Empire had some of the greatest warriors. It sounds more like they'd have members and equipment on their side. I'm not saying well, that's necessarily a bad thing. It's just, uh, if we're the toughest uh, they've got for this, that we've got for this, then everybody we can recruit for the better. I can, I can try to send more messages back home and try to recruit, or it may not be a bad idea for me to go back and visit home one of these days to see what additional uh, forces or perhaps blessings can be bestowed upon us to help out our efforts out here. Yes, and, uh, well, we will make do. Um, although I will say this. Um, when it comes to dragons, I've never fought a dragon myself. I've been in the proximity of people who have fought dragons. Um, fortunately. Uh, although I suppose that fortune might be coming to an end uh, soon enough. Uh, A hundred men standing in formation against a dragon 300 feet in the air um, is not a whole lot when that dragon can swoop to the earth and... Uh, right. No, that sounds like a, a not, not a good strategy. Indeed. Um, however, uh, a hundred ballastae would perhaps make a dragon turn around. There you go. At least. Um, so. Historically. Philosophies I'm working on. Isn't it ballastae that have taken down dragons in the past in terms of legend and stories? Uh, well, if it's, yes, if it's not, um, you know, uh, mythic wizards or, uh, similar. Right. I think it's a great mage. Similar basis. Um, the reason chromatic dragons tend to not attack major cities is, yes, because, uh, Places like that can quickly mobilize a aerial defense against them. Unless we could get the aid of an even older and more powerful metallic dragon, but I highly doubt that would be something the Cradian Empire really has the inroads for or the material to negotiate. Yes, I'm. I'm not. I'm not aware of any who live among us and uh, as much as I'd like it if we could find one buried in the dirt around here somewhere um, I'm not counting on it Sadly the um, most powerful beasts of, of the um, of the Silver Coast are while loyal to um, certain powers out there unfortunately being bound to the water makes them a little bit less effective for our purposes Hmm. Huh. I wonder, odd thought, I wonder if that uh, giant worm could somehow be utilized, if there's some way we could make a bait, though I still don't think you'd be able to reach up 300 feet. Hmm. What else? You've seen that giant frog abomination. I doubt we'd be able to get that to uh, assist us, or that it would even be relevant to the fight. Hmm. Oh. Now this definitely presents quite a challenge for us. Even if we have a hundred ballistae, uh, who would be able to operate them for all of us? Right, there, there's only so many of us. I 
I wouldn't exclude the goblins in the uh, far west, but we would have to give them something really big because they don't seem to really care about anything except people meddling with their, you know, happy, cozy lives in the, in the hills out there. That Indeed. is their tribal our, region. Our treaty with them is a uh, more of a non-interference. Uh, I know Jabberlax here has decided to join us of his own accord, but um, uh, Chief Gatma, I believe it was, uh, has uh, decided some time ago that she would not be assisting us um, while still not hampering us. Um, so uh, while we are on friendly terms, I'm not sure I could ask them to fight for us. Uh, although um, I suppose if they too are at risk of a dragon attack, then maybe they could, maybe they would be willing to get involved. That would be a very tough thing to sell them on, as they're so far away. A, uh, they would be the lowest priority of targets. The dragon from somewhere else in the world would be more likely to mess with them. I, hmm. And I suppose the um, rate by which the uh, twig monsters, the, uh, the creatures that we, we found and found the seeds for, would be able to be produced and trained and age at a rate where they could assist us in combat, though I also, you know, worry about the efficacy of creatures made of wood against a fire-breathing dragon. Uh, well, yes, I see. Yeah, we'll have that's to, a thing. Uh, check in with Grandmother and see uh, how um, how little Kapua is doing lately. Um, it seems like maybe something that would help us, though, is if we can find an even more permanent solution to fire resistance, uh, something that would actually make us immune. I think the armor we have now is good to an extent, but if, uh, if strafing runs done from above with flame is what we're mostly up against, some way that we can be fully immune to that would allow a smaller contingent of people to stand up to that sort of wrath and be able to uh, hopefully return fire and get off as many uh, shots as possible before the devices themselves start getting towards. That is true. Uh, well, maybe they could make um, shields claws, but... out of uh, fire-resistant scale Possibly. individual shields. So that if there is a meteor shower um, or fire from above, then they have that while they can be mobile. Perhaps all we need to do is hunt down another one of these princes and recruit some of their own minions for that purpose. Um, but that's getting ahead of ourselves. The other one thought that I have is how much they can potentially be automated to be uh, aimed and fired in a sequence as a group from one unit or enough units that we'd be able to operate and, and roll out in position as needed. Um, I know there's ways to use um, uh, springs and um, coils and such to make something that would be automated but also you know, completely made of steel that fire wouldn't really affect it. It would make it hot, but it wouldn't warp it in such a way that it wouldn't be able to be fired. Well, that's an idea. We'll have to race that to Smithy. Be a lot of steel, but uh, he's pretty smart with these things. I'm pretty sure you could figure something out. It could be cheaper than men in the long run. Depends. Um, something you'll look and do there. I can hardly hear you. You're muttering. Oh, sorry. Uh, she just said uh, it, it's it's something to look into. Consideration. Okay. Thank you. 
if given the material to make more golems uh, like his own, uh, that could also potentially be helpful. Something that's built with a naturally fire resistant material to begin with. Yes, well, I think the next order of business on that front was a new uh, vessel for Keen, was it not? Right, but that's a very specific sort of task. That's for taking a familiar and giving it that sort of um, equipment. Uh, I suppose it would take a little conversation with him to figure out exactly what source materials he used for um, his, but to see if the Empire would be able to supply more of that material, if he'd be able to create more. If that's the case, perhaps getting him um, apprentices to be able to help with the process would be worthwhile. Mm, agreed. All right, well, these, these are certainly all good options. Um... So in the interim, where should we consider heading off to once this um, redshift wanes? Because I... I think we have a few different places we could consider trying to find a way to cross into Shose, for example, through the hills, or... Uh... Yes, that's what I was going to ask. Um... Well... I suppose the question is, um, we can't go over this wall. We could perhaps go under it, but it would take an inordinate amount of effort to do that. Unless a giant worm has a hole it's dug for us, but I don't think it'll be that convenient. Indeed. Um, has anyone tried teleporting through the wall beyond it? We didn't want to Not risk yet. that, but it is a possibility. As it is mundane glass, there shouldn't really be anything to prevent it, unless there's a ward on the other side that's undetectable. Right. Um, well, uh, don't take any undue risks, uh, but, uh, well... If it's possible, it could be useful, but even if it is possible, uh, we can't rely on that to get the whole commission over to the other side. Um... Well, if it's ordinary glass, theoretically, then it's breakable. We just have to find a big enough, strong enough, fast enough projectile or something to actually break the glass. Indeed, theoretically. I would imagine disintegration would do it, but I think that's a little out of everybody's reach right now. Yeah. Quite a powerful spell. Yeah, I cannot disintegrate. Uh, so, um, there must be I can't some dimension way door, it. but I think that's just me. Yeah, that's you and one other person. Yeah, I can bring along other objects, that's right. Um, a diamond-tipped arrow, perhaps? We'd have to have an incredible amount of power behind it, though, and, and momentum and thrust for a single arrow to pierce that glass. The glass is inches thick, isn't it? A foot thick? Five feet. Um, uh, perhaps not a bow, but um, a bow oh, stay oh. would be... Incredible damage to... Objects, isn't there a what? A metal that does ah adamantium, yes. Objects. Adamantium. I don't know if we have access to that. Um, I mean, if we I'm use something sure like a a siege engine, ballista, um, trebuchet, I believe something like, like that, metal. it might have enough force to actually throw a projectile into the glass and break it. What were you saying, Ernest? I believe there's also that one spell. Um, oh, 
What is that? Shatter? I don't it think Shatter like... worked on it. I I don't know. I believe yeah, I did. Did you try Shatter? Yeah, I believe so. I don't recall if you did. All right. Sounds correct. Um. Uh. As well, uh, Siege Engine is is an option. Um. I mean, I suppose if we could simply punch a hole in the thing. Um, then problem solved, right? We just need a, a road. Uh, as long as we can fit a wagon through it. Um, <clears throat> or again, well, hopefully or we it simply wouldn't, uh, find a way around. Hopefully it wouldn't have some kind of an alarm system on it. I'm guessing it's been there a very long time. Yeah, who, who knows? I mean, you've already determined it was most likely not there 1,000 years ago. Um, so, anywhere between what? Three and one thousand years old. Hmm. I wonder, uh, does do any among us know the spell fabricate? I think that might be one that I'll have to learn. It no, I don't know that. It would allow me to make essentially a staircase or bridge by extracting the glass out of the wall itself. A scroll of that would be rather expensive. Not impossible to obtain, them, just expensive. Well, in the meantime, uh, what? Where are you thinking of checking next? If not the glass wall further, or a way to get around it, then um, perhaps trying to connect some of the distance between where we're at and where um, Captain Ben is at, so that way there's less of a a uh, dead spot in that zone. Um, could you bring up the map, please? Yeah. Let's head over there. Now, what are our options again once the map gets brought up? We can try uh, to find uh, a way into Shose, uh over the hill or okay. some other well, method. And that's that huge blue line on the map. Yeah. Um that's one option. Another option is um trying to rush south to get beyond the mountains and see what we can find there. Uh though I think that would be easier to do with the boat. That would be, you know, a week's worth of planning. Um the locations that are discovered up in the north, there's the um, the battlefield and the uh, the place where we held out, the ruined castle. Correct. And that gets us a certain distance to where Captain Van is at. We could cut through, uh, through and around that area to connect the path and then return, uh, perhaps going around the lake on the way back. Yeah, the um, the location that uh, Van's team is at is around here. Um, so they're actually pretty close to where you are right now. Um, and of course, there's back clearing to the um, 
northwest because there's a lot of empty spot there and I think we're still unsure right. if there's some um, wayward necromancer who lives up in that region. For all I know, we didn't get a good look. That wayward necromancer could be one of the dragon kids. And the yeah, I hadn't um, even considered that's true though. The the thing that uh, Mordier discovered that um, loaded may have been their version of a teleportation method that they were using. Why they would want to harass the goblins, though, I don't know, unless they were recruiting them as undead agents, and there's a pile of goblin skeletons working for the Dragon King. If we were going to go the fabrication path to try to make a hole in that wall, I would probably need to take a little time to learn how to work with glass. Right. It's not completely beyond me. It'd just probably take a month or two to learn the, the basics and get some practice with it. Um, I'll also remind the party that when you spoke to Kieran at Shose, um, Albus Taver did extract uh, some knowledge from him and he had mentioned um, the nearby town of Palade and uh, rumors about some um, druidic monument pretty close by as well. What direction um, was that from yeah, uh, where is that? Jose? Uh, northwest-ish and uh, south-ish, uh, respectively. Hmm. But it didn't sound like the the fort that we held out in was directly to the north. Probably be further, because this was a town, not not a fortress. Right. Uh, yeah, Karen called it a town. Well, maybe that fortress is meant to overlook the town. It could be wise to try to explore this area out here. My one worry no. if we, if we poke too far into that area is that we'll um, unexpectedly stumble across. Uh, whatever remnants of forces Nasharala and um, Zoramos were gathering up that way. If they had some serpents that were still out there that hadn't died by the red shift, that would be quite a surprise. They would have to be at some other fort. They seemed... Well, it was just Atlas Tabor and I that went scouting that one day. Or no, yes. And yeah, relax there, but um, yeah, the uh, the the yellow white one is the um, amphitheater, seemed... uh, not the amphitheater, the the uh, arena. Yeah, the arena. but they they seemed almost wholly unconcerned, and perhaps that's because they they had the fortress they could teleport back to, um, perhaps whenever they pleased, but. Maybe they had some sort of way of... Well, uh, while you were at uh, Nasharala's fort, you did find the uh, leftover corpse of a very much shifted salamander. Yes. Um, that, that we did. Magnia seemed to uh, fear it as well. Yeah, he, he talked about it a bit, how they um, gathered up in safety. All right. Well, there also may be a passage through the mountains to the north. Uh, 
that we haven't found. It would be quite a trek, but... Um... I think it could be worth it. Yeah, I mean, um, you've explored the southeastern mountains a little bit. Um, you also uh, traveled with Kieran and Holtzman up. Um, it's a so, large mountain range. That's yes. For sure. uh, anyway, you traveled with those two um, up those mountains as well. Uh, nobody has really been up the northern mountains yet, so that is all unknown territory for now. It's worth a shot. And, um, like she said, the plan to send somebody, uh, send a ship around the uh, the bay and see what they can find is uh, going to be underway uh, now that there's far less risk of bumping into a dragon. Indeed. Uh, can we take like a 10 minute break? Uh, I, I was actually thinking if we're about to decide uh, where we're going, um, it might be a good time to uh, call it for the night and then go there next session. That makes sense. Oh, okay. All right. Um. So do do we have a do we have a general idea? Any kind of plan? I'm always up for exploring. Yeah, I think it's worth. Yeah, I mean, new places. It's always cool. Push north and and see if there's either a way. An outpost we can take over at the foot of the mountains, or something to do up that way. Um, and then okay. Perhaps kind of explore the the forest in between here and there on our way. Push north, it will be then. Um, so we'll go with that, uh, and uh, we'll get right to it next time. Sounds good, man. Okay. Sounds good. Cool. So we'll be back on in two weeks. Hopefully everybody can make it. I'll put I'll put stuff on the calendar soon. Okay. okay. Right. Cool. Thanks for the session, man. Thanks for the, uh, thanks thanks for the dungeon. Thanks, sir.